Greetings, travelers. Video games have genres. Roguelike, roguelite, deck building, survival, crafting, extraction shooter, boomer shooter, immersive sim, CRPG, JRPG, MMORPG, ARPG, RPG. I don't think I understand anything. One of the things that drives me crazy as a mediocre internet personality is that people very much assume what kind of games I like based on what games I've previously liked or disliked. Maybe that sounds a bit odd, because it might make sense at first. It's no secret that I like Devil May Cry, but what if I told you I don't like a lot of other action games I've played? I don't enjoy Neo, a fact that generally upsets fans of that particular franchise. I obviously still have a large repertoire of Final Fantasy XIV videos, which is a game that I like, but I hate every other MMO I've ever played in my life. When I originally wanted to stop focusing on Final Fantasy XIV, a large portion of my audience assumed I would just move to another MMO, something that I've never had a desire to do. To be clear, I do not mind people suggesting games for me to cover. In the past, I would have replied with, I probably won't because my non-Final Fantasy XIV content will always commercially fail. Instead, I do it for fun, but that doesn't appear to be true anymore. Pop the champagne. I'm sure nothing I make after that will ever flop. Usually the suggestion doesn't come from a place of, this is a game I thought was entertaining. It's usually, this is a game like other game you played, so clearly you will enjoy it. Why would I play that game if I can just play the game I like instead? Some people hate this dismissive mentality, but that's why I say, don't frame it that way. My brain is automatically going to throw the suggestion into the garbage. I've clearly never made direct comparisons to other games ever. To digress, my other hobby that got away from me thanks to the pandemic is playing board games. Even among my friends, they always look me in the eye and go, you'd probably like this game. It plays like that game. I don't care. I just want to know if the game is interesting. It was at the point where my board game buddies insisted that I would absolutely hate Food Chain Magnate because I don't usually like any of the aggressive mechanics in other games. And then it turned out to be one of my all-time favorites. It seems I just don't like games where it feels like they force aggressive mechanics into it instead of building the entire game around it. I also strongly dislike Seven Wonders but like just about every other game with card drafting in it from Seasons to Innis to Terraforming Mars. This isn't a video about why I hate that particular title because I don't actually know why, and I'm not currently introspecting. Just know that based on the fact that I did not like Seven Wonders, my friends assumed that I would hate card drafting in general, when that clearly isn't the case. I played a ton of Sushi Go, which is also just a pure card drafting game. I should also be clear on what I'm not saying, I am not saying that a game being similar to another game is bad, or automatically a bad description. If calling something a Souls-like translates to, this is a game where you are expected to die, then it can still be useful for gauging if you might like something. However, there's a whole spectrum on what expected to die even means. My perspective on Souls-like is warp thanks to how much I've played them, where it does not take me hundreds of tries to beat any of the bosses. It's usually like, 10 at most, with some exceptions. I might think a game is totally reasonable, where a series beginner might be completely overwhelmed. God Hand is infinitely harder than any Souls-like game I've ever played, but it's not really a Dark Souls-type game though, in any other aspect, like atmosphere or level design. Both games just have difficulty as part of their core. It's so obviously a terrible comparison when God Hand has way more in common with other pure action games like Devil May Cry, just faster, more complicated, and harder. It's good to note that because if you enjoy Devil May Cry, I'm not sure if I'd recommend God Hand for that reason. Devil May Cry can be challenging, but it's not entirely about challenge. Some people just don't like hard games. But is that entirely true? Probably not. I myself never really enjoyed difficult games when I was younger. I used to get more easily frustrated than I already do, but I'm better about it now, just not perfect. It's a continuous battle as I'm sure everyone understands. Nowadays I play tons of extremely difficult games. It's a bit sad to be completely dismissive of an entire subset of media just because of a few bad experiences. I've watched many people turn away from From Software as if they're a kid avoiding vegetables, only to realize that it's delicious. It's such a common experience among first-timers that I think people who got into it right away are the exception. I myself say that I don't like open-world games, but I enjoy Elden Ring, and Breath of the Wild, and Far Cry 3, 
and even Just Cause 2, do I actually hate the entire genre, or am I just not the biggest fan of Skyrim, or Fallout, but not New Vegas? Wow, what a brave thing to say. Sure, the aforementioned open world games are not my favorite in their respective series, but I did enjoy them, and I wouldn't have had those fun experiences if I just threw it away before trying. I still prefer games narrow in scope and footprint, but you might not actually hate the entire genre. You might just not have found the one right for you. As much as this tangent has been about difficult games, I see the same dismissive attitude towards easy games. People will confidently say they don't like cozy life sims, but maybe they just haven't found the right one that will resonate with them. It's equally sad to dismiss all those games as well. I even see the exact same attitude in the RPG of the J variety circles, where I constantly hear, Oh, I don't usually like JRPGs, but this one... This one is really good. I don't think you dislike JRPGs, I think you just don't like Final Fantasy, or the Tales of series. I myself started to think I'd just hate the whole genre, but then I replayed Chrono Trigger, played Trails in the Sky, played Radiant Historia, and went, wait a minute, I don't intrinsically hate this game structure, I just hate games that do it poorly, in my opinion. Of course at its core it's not inherently terrible. Nobody sets out to make a bad game. Another problem that comes up is people can only make comparisons to what they've experienced. I just compared God Hand to Devil May Cry, but that's just based on what I know. Maybe there's a boxing game like Punch-Out that's somehow a better comparison point to people who played that, but I couldn't reach them because I don't know Punch-Out and vice versa. Describing why something is enjoyable without drawing exact comparisons is also better for those who don't have the same frame of reference. God Hand is a fast-paced, ruthless action game with a completely silly story and is extremely campy in tone. One of the game's iconic attacks is literally kicking someone in the balls. That's not even something I'd see in DMC Devil May Cry. It can also lead to making associations that don't really make sense. Lisa the Painful got compared to Undertale a lot, and both are clearly taking some points from the Mother series, but Lisa the Painful reminds me more of Omori than Undertale. Is that a better comparison? Have more people played Omori? Probably not at the time of Lisa's release. Is it a fair comparison? One is a masterclass in storytelling by blending raw edge with raw emotion, and the other one is Omori. I'm more aware of this as I've grown as a critic, my past doesn't exist. A mechanic in a particular game can make me very frustrated and annoyed, which makes me want to jump to the conclusion that it's always bad. Then something comes around that does the exact same thing but better, and I look like a complete idiot. There's so many moving pieces in a game that changing one thing can have countless cascading consequences, good or bad, that while it might seem like a fundamental issue with an entire system, it can just be an isolated incident. There are more technical things that are definitely bad. A game randomly crashing isn't usually an artistic choice, but who knows? Maybe there is some mad lad out there who could make a game around it randomly bricking and turn it into a fun concept. It's dangerous to say that an idea is always bad. Unless it's trying to make another full-blown life simulation MMORPG to suck up some crowdfunding money. Believing in absolutely every concept having merit just leads to you getting fleeced out of your time and money. At a glance, it's not easy to tell what games are genuinely inspired by their predecessors, and which ones are just copying a successful formula. There are red flags, but every now and again, you have to take a chance. I've been skirting around the fact that there is a very good reason for why people think this way. Okay, not actually, I just have a really good theory as to why. Especially these days, money is a lot tighter for most people. I can speak for myself, I can't just throw 60 to 70 bucks at every new game that catches my interest. That's one factor, but time is the other. I don't have infinite free time to just invest into anything that comes my way. Why spend a bunch of time on something that I'm not guaranteed to like? Better to just stick to what I know so I know I'm gonna have a good enough time. That's where a lot of this mentality stems from. People want a guarantee that they will like the game they play. A seal of approval that ensures their time and money will not be wasted. Deep down, we all know it's not possible, but it is an easy idea to cling to. Thankfully, our corporate overlords also want the same thing. They want a guarantee that their game will make infinite money, so better make what sells infinite copies. Then it all blows up when people would rather stick to the stuff they like than to play a rehashed version that's worse. 
It's not an easy one-sided issue. The masses demand infinite innovation and infinite familiarity, while the C-suites demand infinite growth and infinite stability. In this disorganized mess of consciousness, I want to clarify, buying something familiar and made by a trusted group of developers who made things that you previously liked isn't a bad idea. Don't disappoint me, Lucas Pope. But if you ever find yourself stuck in this rut of playing the same exact things over and over and slowly learning to hate it, take a chance on something. We all have biases, but the only way to overcome them is by being exposed to something different more often. Play a game that you're unsure if you'll like. Play a game that you think you'll hate. Go back and try something that you hated or thought was mid years ago and see if you appreciate it now. There's so much to enjoy about this hobby that you close yourself off to if you don't take risks. It takes time to learn to appreciate games on their own terms, but it's a skill worth learning. Especially if it's only like 5 bucks on GOG. What's the worst that could happen? My favorite games are not something I bought because I knew for 100% certain that I would like them. I never set out to hate a game before I play it, but some games certainly make it easy. To anyone who wants to suggest games to me, maybe it's time I make a spreadsheet, it's fine to draw comparisons. However, that shouldn't be the only selling point. Tell me what you like about it. Is the gameplay interesting? The writing good? The cat girls adorable? At that point, why am I even making a video about the game? I don't want a sales pitch. A genuine recount of what made you like it is more compelling to me. That and spelling my name correctly in your email. Now let's get out there and stop bringing up Chained Echoes. Maybe I'll check it out. Maybe I won't. Thanks to my patrons, as always, who allow me to whiplash between long and short form videos as a bad business decision. If you want notifications every time I post something new, join my stupid f***ing Discord because I don't push these videos to subscribers.